Yes, it's Monday, and we all know what that means, don't we? Yes, it's time to talk about the dead. Well, the dead, when they come back to life. Well, not back to life. They're not zombies. But, you know, when they come back as spirits to haunt us in our everyday realm. Yes, we're going to talk about ghosts for a full half hour at the very least with me. Hi, I'm Kev. And we're going to have all the usual shenanigans going on. We're going to, of course, have a paranormal review where I review the paranormal so you don't have to in a strange accent. And we're going to go over to Becca's Reddit corner now. I must give you preamble and pre-warning here. Becca's Reddit Corner may include, it does include, an addition to the haunted canon. Yes, it does. So, as you may well know, we've had a series of incidents not reported by me, no, 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 but reported by Becca in the flat, reported by the sceptical Becca in, not in the flat, in the house that we now live. And um, we've been keeping an eye on it week on week and seeing if there's any new reports. Anyway, yesterday, during a Patreon special, Becca announced. There's been an addition to the canon of the haunting of the house. So there'll be more on that later in Reddit Corner. Keep your ears, your ears, I meant to say ears, but it sounded like ease, the letter E. Keep your ears peeled. Yes. Now, of course, this week we lost our monarch. Yes, we did. And of course, it's always sad when anyone dies, but especially if they make it to 96. You know, irrelevant of your thoughts on the monarchy, etc., it is, you know, it's very sad when somebody makes it to 96. Or is it sad or is it like a well done you? You're bloody done amazing there. 96, four off the ton. Well done indeed. But either way, we're not going to talk much about it because, well, that's it really. That's all we're going to talk about it. And the reason for that is because it's everywhere. And you don't come here to get a bit of where you're getting everywhere else, do you? No, you come here for ghosts, of course. So we'll move swiftly on. But uh, yes, if you're sad, then condolences. And if you're not, and crack on, I suppose. Um, but we do have a lot of ghosts for you today, which is the point of the show. But of course, before we get to our paranormal party of purveyance, and too many P's, not many of them make sense, except for paranormal, really. We need to, of course, say a big thank you to our wonderful Patreons. Because when you sign up to Patreon, not only do you support the show, but you also get two, two extra shows each and every week. Although there was only one last week because my voice went. Apologies, and thank you for everyone who reached out on Patreon and said, hope you're feeling better soon. I hear ya. Thanks, guys. Um, so you do get all of that, and you also get me singing your name via the medium of song. The guitar is well and truly out, and we have six wonderful new Patreons to say thank you to today. We have Heidi Gray, Harry O'Leary, Amy Chamberlain, Kirsty Quinn, Amanda H., and Manuel R. And this little country number is for you. Oh, yeah. Heidi Gray, Harry O'Leary... Amy Chamberlain, yeah. Kirsty Quinn and Amanda H. Manuel R. You've signed up to Patreon, it's true. Ooh, ooh, and I just wanna say thank you. End it on a seventh. If you know by now, you know by now. We always end things on a seventh here in Wind Tag Towers. But thank you so much, guys. Don't forget, if you want to become a Patreon, support the show, get two extra shows every week, and around 200 plus episodes of back catalogue in Patreon land to binge, head over to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. Now, let's have a paranormal review, shall we? Yes, it's time for the Paranormal Review, where I review the paranormal, so you don't have to. Anyway, before we jump into today's one, we need to go back and readdress last week's one, which was, of course, The Devil in Ohio. Now, since I've done that review, a lot of people came out and said, it's pants. Why did you say it was good? Now, I can only apologise. I reviewed it halfway through, right? But, but, I'm not going to backtrack. I still like it. I still do like it. Would I say it's as good as I said it was last week? No, because it was better in the first part of the season than it was in the last part of the season. There was a lot of non-logical things that took place in the last part of the season. Um, yeah, very non-sequitur things where it was like, well, why would she be there? Or why would that happen? Which didn't happen at the start of the season. So my review is going to change slightly. I still do like it. I still think it's good. But it's probably not as good as I made out last week. Okay, so a slight amendment. I'm not going to side with everyone and say it's terrible because I think there are a lot worse paranormal programs out there that people think are great. And I think this does all right. I do. 
but I probably put too much of a shine on it last week. Too late if you've already sat through and hated it, thanks to my recommendation. Sorry about that. But don't let that put you off the rest of the recommendations, because that's kind of pivotal to the show, you know what I mean? Anyway, this week's Paranormal Review is an audiobook that I'm currently... Oh, here he goes again. I'm currently halfway through, but there's a difference with this one. Because it's by a guy called Mitch Horowitz. Now, if anyone's seen what i done on um, Cursed Films, where the episode of Rosemary's Baby, Mitch featured on that. And it was because he featured on that that I looked into him a bit more and found out that he's like a massive occult like researcher and writer. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to give him a chance. So I listened to a few podcasts with him on, and he's a really intriguing and interesting bloke. Now, it turns out that we share a lot of similar beliefs. Now, anyone who's a Patreon will know that in the past, I've kind of done full conversations with Becca talking about um, demonology and the fact that conjuring demons can be thought of as bringing forth something which already exists in your own psyche. I won't go into detail, but those who have heard it know what I'm on about. Anyway, he's of a similar mindset. And this book that I'm reading, not reading, I'm listening to at the moment is called The Miracle Club. And it's this idea of what he's calling new thought. But if you give this book and what he talks about a cursory glance, you'd be fooled into thinking it's kind of like The Secret. And I absolutely despise The Secret. Do you know what I mean? Anyone says, I read The Secret. I've put it out into the universe. It's like, you want to try reading, I don't know, The Beano or something? That'd be more useful for you. But he puts it in a way where it gives the power back to you. So it's more about the changes in how you behave and the changes in how you approach things. Okay, so it's not like magic per se. It's not like magic as in The, the Secret where it's make a sigil on your hand or a sigil on your hand. And every time you look at it, the universe will start giving you what you want. It, it touches into that, but it's not all that like stupid stuff. In my opinion, stupid stuff anyway. It's more like, yeah, what this will do will make you, by looking at that symbol, for example, it'll make you act differently. It'll make you approach situations differently, more confidently. And it's a really interesting topic, one that I'm really getting into at the minute. So it's not really a paranormal review. It's more of a supernatural review. And I mean supernatural, because this whole point is... You have all of these abilities within yourself to be more confident, to be more persuasive, you know, and you can bring them out of yourself with little sort of mini rituals, if you like, and how you change your perception and you focus on things. And that's his whole sort of, that's his bag, baby, for want of a better phrase. So do check it out. This particular book is called The Miracle Club, but anything by Mitch Horowitz as a writer is going to at least make you think very, very deeply about certain things in your life. And that can only be a good thing, I do believe. So currently, Mitch Horowitz, the occult writer, two thumbs up to the sky. <laughs> yes, it's time for my favourite part of each and every Monday, where I get to read your true paranormal experiences to the audience. And I do love this because I very often hear something or a type of ghost or a type of situation that I've never heard before. And that's exactly why I do this. Because yes, I'm a podcast host, but I'm also a paranormal fan and have been since a small child. Anyway, firstly, I've had an email through from Taya, and Taya writes to say, and this is very important, she writes to say, hi, do you still read out ghost stories when people send them in? Because I sent one in in June, and you've not read it out. And I can only apologise, Taya, because we received that many emails, both for this show and The Dark Paranormal, things can get dropped, so I sincerely apologise. If anyone's listening to this and they think, yeah, I sent my story in too and he hasn't read that, let me know. You know, I can only apologise and I'll guarantee I'll find it and I'll read it out, which is what I'm going to do with Taya's story. Now, she sent this in back in June. So again, it doesn't matter when you've sent it. If you think I've not read it out, let me know and I will fix the problem. It's as simple as that. Or I will try to fix the problem. It's as simple as that. Anyway, this is Taya's email. Hello, Kevin. Hi. Becca. Hi. And TNC. Ma, ma, ma. She does like it when people abbreviate. This is Taya, your new Canadian best friend again. This time, I have a story about how I met my dead father-in-law and made my husband a believer. Come on, people, let's get behind this tale now. This is Taya's story. Our marriage was a second marriage for both of us, so we were a little older when we got together. My husband's father had passed ten years before we got married, and I never met him. We were in our first place together, a basement suite, 
which is like a garden flat in the UK, which had a very weird vibe, and stuff definitely happened but those are different stories. This story is about being visited by my father-in-law, David. My husband is a truck driver, and at that point in time he was out of town, Sunday overnight to Monday. So my daughter and I were alone in the house. We had each come into the marriage with children, so the rest of the week it was much busier as he had 50-50 time with his children. Anyways, on these Sundays, I would wait until my child was in bed and asleep before I would go outside for a quick smoke. We had a nice little area next to our side door with apple trees, so I would sit out there relaxing. One day, the light next to the door started flickering, so I thought my kid was inside flicking it on and off. When I checked, she wasn't there. So I went to her room expecting her to be hiding under the blankets, giggling about her prank. But she was fast asleep, and obviously had been for a while. She'd not just been up flicking the lights on and off. Next, I thought there must be something wrong with the bulb, so I changed the bulb. Next time I went out that night, the light was on and not flickering. I fixed it, right? Well, after being out there for a few minutes, the light started flickering again. Okay, I thought. It must be the electrical wiring or whatever. I decided I would tell my husband the next day when he got home and he could let the landlord know. Then I completely forgot about it. My husband is a well-known workaholic, and he had a side job as a pizza delivery guy. So sometimes he worked evenings when we did not have his kids, and again my daughter and I would be alone in the house. On one of these nights, the same thing happened. The light would start flickering when I was outside. I would check on my kid and she would be fast asleep. This happened a few more nights when we were alone, but I kept forgetting to mention it to my husband. One day, I ran into our landlord and mentioned the flickering light. He reminded me that he'd had all the rewiring done before we moved in, as he'd recently bought the house and it was suggested to him to do if he wanted to rent the place out. As I mentioned before, the place had a spooky vibe to it, so I just figured it was the ghost of the house. I wasn't worried as the feeling with the flickering light wasn't bad. It actually felt protective. One night my husband and I are out of the back door, a different door, smoking. And I suddenly remember my flickering light experiences, so I tell my husband about them and say that I think it's probably a ghost, probably the one I can feel in the house. He tells me that it has to have a different explanation, like the bulb or the wiring. I told him I thought of all those things, that I changed the bulb and I talked to the landlord. He says it has to be something logical, So I start to get upset that he doesn't believe me. All of a sudden, the light outside this door starts flickering the same as the other one. His whole demeanor changes, and he says to me, You're right. It is a ghost, but it's not who you think. It's my dad. He used to flick the lights in our rooms like that whenever he wanted us to go to bed or whatever. As soon as he said this, the light stopped flickering. He probably wanted me to know he's watching over you and that he approves of you. After that, the flickering did not happen as often, but I knew David was there. Later in the year, at Christmas time, we had my mother-in-law and brother-in-law over for dinner. I asked my mother-in-law if there were any particular dishes she wanted me to make for the dinner. She had actually just found David's chestnut stuffing recipe and was wondering if I would make that. So I'm in the kitchen making dinner and my husband, my mother-in-law and my brother-in-law are sitting at the table visiting. My husband mentions to my brother-in-law that I will be making their dad's stuffing recipe. At that time, my brother-in-law was working in a kitchen and thinks he knew how to do everything better. We don't really know each other well and my husband tells him to leave me alone in the kitchen. I was starting to prep for the stuffing and all of a sudden... My brother-in-law is right behind me, commenting on how I'm making the recipe. My husband once again tells him to leave me alone, and that he doesn't want to piss me off because I will kick him out, family or not. But he keeps making comments. I turn to him and tell him off loudly, and the light on the stove hood starts flickering, 
then the light over the table starts flickering. So my husband says, Jim, now you've pissed off dad as well. Sit the F down and enjoy visiting your family. He did sit down and stayed quiet for the rest of the night. Thanks, David, I said, and the light stopped. We've lived in two more houses since then. The one we've been in for ten years and one before that. We've had flickering lights in both places. My dad passed away about nine months after we moved into the house we are in now, and the flickering lights stopped. We figured he decided he did not need to watch over me now that my own dad would be doing it. But he has been, but again, these are different stories. Thank you for reading my story about meeting my father-in-law. I wish I'd been able to meet him when he was alive, as I know he was a wonderful person. Thank you for your time. I appreciate the time you give us with the shows. I'm sure you guys have heard this a million times before, but you really helped me get through the pandemic. Taya. Well, thank you, Taya. And no, we've heard it a few times and it's always very humbling to hear. So I'm very glad we done something, whatever it was. Um, but thank you for your story. And again, sincere apologies that it took months for me to read out. Again, guys, and I sincerely mean this. If you've sent a story in and it's not been read out, get in touch, let me know. You know, it's not on purpose. Even if your story, if you've sent it and you think, it must be awful, he doesn't like that. There are no awful paranormal stories. Well, there are. But, you know, I'll still read them out, is my point. Anyway, thank you so much, Taya. That was a pleasure to read. And David sounds like a gent. A sheer gentleman. A light-flicking gentleman. And you know what? You know what that story made me think of as well? Where he says he used to flick the lights on when he wanted to, us to go to bed or whatever. You know what my brother used to do? My brother's about maybe six years older than me. And me and my sister, are, there's only a year between us. So he would babysit us when he would be like 16 and we'd be like 10. And you know what he used to do, genuinely? And this isn't where my love of the paranormal comes from. I was already into it at 10. But if I was like lying on top of the bed, reading a book or something and not going to sleep with the light off, he would come into the room and he would stand on my bed and he'd reach up to the light shade and he'd swirl it round in a circular motion and say, I'm going to bring Dickie Dark out. And he'd start moving it round and go, Dickie Dark, Dickie Dark. Now, the idea was Dickie Dark was some sort of demon that he would summon forth to absolutely terrorise me unless I went to sleep. That's borderline abuse, brother. But it was, um, yeah, that's what it reminded me of anyway. Dicky Dark. Anyway, let's have another paranormal tale, shall we? Our next email comes in from a gentleman named James. And he writes, Hi Kev, hi. Becca, hi. Neighbours cat, meow. And the Facebook group, hooray. <laughs> Never had to try and do that before. That was a collection of people all cheering, just in case anyone needed any notes on that. My name is James, and I'm a teacher in Holloway, London. I've only just discovered your podcast. You are actually the first one I subscribe to, and both me and my husband love both your shows. Why, thank you, James. Neither of us are very knowledgeable about the paranormal. We don't know spirit names or anything as such, but we have witnessed a couple of strange things in certain parts of our relationship. Interesting. Now this is James's email. We love doing ghost tours and haunted houses. We visited 30 East Drive, Dean Court Hotel and other haunted locations. During one particular night away, we had an exceedingly restless night. This was at Coombe Abbey in Warwickshire. We'd been out for dinner and a couple of drinks, came back to soak up the atmosphere and watch a spooky film on the laptop. We'd only been in our room for a few minutes when a mug fell off the side table. Neither of us were near it at all. I was coming out of the bathroom and my husband was combing his beard across the side table. We both had a perfectly good view of that table. This mug just toppled over and dropped. We both saw this happen. Obviously we were scared, but not freaking out. More happy that we'd finally seen something that we couldn't explain. I was particularly giddy about this event. Throughout the night we could hear all manner of creaks and thumps. This was almost every five minutes or so. At one point, I could have sworn I heard a whisper. I motioned to my husband to listen carefully, but he said he couldn't hear anything, but I'm sure I heard it. We both tried to sleep as best as possible, but that was all in vain. Every noise was greatly exaggerated and clearly a ghost or something. My husband even said he saw a shadow move near the bathroom. My side of the bed was facing that door, no less. 
so obviously I spent a vast majority of my nights staring at that door, but I saw nothing. In the morning, as we were packing things up, I felt a sudden change in the room, like it got colder very quickly. I said this to my fella, and he winced at me. What's wrong? I asked. Something stung me on my head. Not a phrase I was expecting to hear. I looked him over and checked for any marks, but couldn't see anything. He said that he had a headache and didn't feel great, mostly due to lack of sleep and too much coffee, I'm sure. Once we got back, he went to the bathroom and came straight back out to show me a very angry-looking bruise in his hairline, like he'd been hit with a small hammer or something. He hadn't bumped his head or anything leading up to this, so it can only come from that being stung in the room. We've had other oddities on certain nights away, but none as epic or aggressive as that. This hasn't discouraged our ghost adventures and we plan on spending the night at the Ram Inn in November, so fingers crossed we see a spectre or two. Thank you for reading this and I look forward to everything you present. Thanks. You're very welcome, James. And fair play you two to be going off to all of these places. In truth, you know what? When me and Becca have done these little jaunts to haunted places... I, I'm obviously the paranormal one out of the two. And I always like, imp- oh yeah, this is going to be dead good, going to be dead good. I always imply that. But I'm the one who absolutely shits themselves when we're there. And like, you, know, you might not have done this one, James, or you might have, but try and go to the Golden Fleece in Leeds. Is it Leeds? No, it's not. It's in York. Fucking hell, some paranormal expert I am. It's in York. Anyway, go to the Golden Fleece in York because that one, that's what I was thinking of when I was reading your story about things going on. I mean, we didn't see a cup smash. That's amazing that you saw that, by the way. But um, it felt like the same way you said you got no sleep. I mean, I had to get very drunk just to last the night there. I had to get almost comatose so that I wouldn't wake up until it was light. And that's a very pathetic thing to admit, but it was very true because it was that terrifying within that room. And it sounds similar to what you've experienced there. So maybe this Coombe Abbey in Warwickshire is somewhere me and Becca should go. Maybe. I don't know. If I do, it looks like I'll be starting to drink again. Anyway, James, thank you very much for your email. Now, everyone, it's time to head over... Oh, just hit the microphone. That's what that little twang noise was. It's time to head over to Becca's Reddit corner, the dark, dingy, depressing... It's not depressing, it's lovely. Corner where Becca actually works. Yeah. Um, But she's going to tell us stuff from Reddit which is spooky. And also, has she experienced something else paranormal in the house? Maybe. Yes, she has. Spoiler alert. She has. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time for Paranormal Reddit Corner with Becca. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Oh, okay. Weird way to start it, isn't it? Yeah, why are you saying that like that? Well, why not? Um, It's your corner. It's your Paranormal Reddit Corner. My corner? Welcome. See, why are you speaking like a mouse again? I'm not. Okay, well, you did. Um, So... I've already teased this. Yesterday on Patreon, we were just ploughing our way through a normal paranormal Patreon episode, as we do on a Sunday, Mm -hmm. and you piped up. (laughs) Pipe up. You did, like the Pied Piper of Hamelin. Oh, I'm sorry. Saying someone piped up with something suggests that you don't really want to hear it. Did you not want to hear it? No, well, I thought I didn't, because I thought you were just going to say something like, and then Wagatha Christie, but you Mm -hmm. didn't. You, You actually blew me away, didn't you? Yeah. So go on. I feel, right, I kind of said everything I had to say on the Patreon, but I will give you the highlights. Yes, well, obviously, because not everyone's a Patreon. <laughs> Fine. I I was in the bathroom, brushing my teeth with an electric toothbrush. Yes. So I can't really hear, you know, usually you can hear people moving around the house. Yeah. But I couldn't because I had done my toothbrush. Exactly. Anyway, a shadow went past the door. I thought you were walking past the bathroom into the little office. Yeah. Um, so I opened the door and you weren't, you were on the stairs with the neighbour's cat. Um, so it was just a shadow, it could have been anything, but it, there was a shadow that went past the door. But it could have been anything. But again, and like we've said with all of the stuff that's made up the canon thus far, mm-hmm. is that I didn't bring this to you, you've brought it to me. Yeah. You, so... But also you've acted physically on it, you've opened the door assuming I would be there because you've seen something physically walk past the door. No, I haven't seen someone physically walk past the door. I've seen a shadow. From outside, in though? Yeah. 
But yeah, so I have physically had to sit on it to open the door to check if it was you or not, and it wasn't you, which is fine. I obviously don't think it was paranormal. You're saying I've brought it to you, but you've made such a big deal out of this now. I explained this yesterday. I feel like if I see something like this and don't mention it, it's like it makes a big thing out of it. I feel like I have to tell you in order to not make a big thing out of it to myself, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I, it makes a paranormal if you don't mention it. Oh no, yeah, it makes, no, it not makes, makes you, it paranormal, yeah, no, but it makes it it would it would indicate that I thought it was paranormal if I didn't mention it. Yeah, Whereas I don't. I, you know, I think it's. I it could have been anything. Like it was just a shadow. But there you go. But a moving shadow. Yeah. And you even said it could have been the cat. And as I pointed out yesterday, what <laughs> like it just grew six feet and then marched into the office. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, given you keep banging on about Orphan Street and now we're like on the side of an orphanage, does it um, make you feel any better that? The shadow I thought was your height, so it's not like a little kid ghost. <laughs> yes and no, because it could mean it's an evil mistress ghost. Well, she's had more interest in us then, would she? Yes, because she may be like you to act like petulant children. <laughs> Maybe you want to stop acting like a petulant child. Maybe you want to stop being an idiot. Nah, 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 nah. Well, well done. There you go. Yeah. Also, we had a bit of a debate yesterday about um, who created a paranormal spot, didn't we? Because there's no debate. There is. There's no debate. It was me, you absolute credit stealer. So anyway, this is this this is in dis- discussion about the Queen dying, but it's not like about the Queen dying. Well, it is, but it's not. So basically, you know what a meme is. Obviously, I said that like I'm 64. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You know these memes that the kids have. Um, <laughs> Do you remember that time my sister asked you if you knew what a meme was? Yeah, and and she like, meant it. Bloody hell! Yeah. I mean, she was like 20 years younger than me, but she was like, "Do you know what a meme is, Kev?" I was like, "Yes." <laughs> No fucking just, God's sake, yeah. I'm not just fell off me penny farthing with absolute <laughs> gadzookness. Yeah. Do you have a, do you even have TikTok? Me? Yeah. Yes. There you go. So you've even got TikTok. I haven't got TikTok. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. Get with the programme, sister. I don't have Snapchat because like, <laughs> I'm not five. <laughs> but anyway. Um, but then again, I'm a bit weird like that. I don't wear shorts normally because I say I'm not five. Don't I? You say it's 90 degrees outside, wear shorts. Like, no, I'm not five. Yeah, like, I don't know why you think that's a childish thing to do. It's just like it a normal is. thing to do. No. Anyway. Um, I mean, you're wearing shorts now. Now it's got cold and rainy. Yes, because I'm in the house. Anyway, so when the Queen died, she'd done this bit with Paddington Bear, didn't she? Not when she died, no. No, no, but, you know, like, as part the of Jubilee. the Jubilee. Yeah. She'd done this bit with Paddington Bear. Now, a lot of memes are popping up with Paddington Bear holding the Queen's hand, drawn from behind like they're walking away. Mm. And the message changes dependent on the meme, but it's largely... I'm done now, Paddington. Please take me to my husband. Yeah, one of them said something like, um, I've packed a marmalade sandwich for you, Marm, or something Yes, like let's that. go. Yeah. Now, the point of it is, well, as we all know here in the world of the paranormal, they're basically implying... I said, no, I said, actually, because we were, to be honest, we were laughing at some of the ridiculous things people were coming up with on social media. And some of them were just, like, too too far. It was, like, ridiculous. Um, but... Yeah, so I was like, so we were looking at it. So I showed you the, I showed you this one, right? And I was like, have you seen it? Like, what, what relevance here is Paddington? Like, why are they acting as if he, why, are you, like, who's made this? What kind of psychopomp is Paddington Bear? Right, and at the time you were scrolling on your own phone and I thought, you didn't really take me on, you didn't acknowledge it. And I thought, well, that's interesting because you do usually, when I use a paranormal term like that, yeah. I'm usually quite I'm impressed. Bre- I'm beaming with like, pride. All right, fair play. Okay, you know, whatever, that's fine. Yeah, moved on. On the Patreon yesterday, you came out with this joke of your own accord, like, as if you'd... Because I, I, like, I, I cracked this joke in the lads' WhatsApp group. I said, you don't know what a, a psychopomp is, lads, but apparently Paddington Bear is a psychopomp because he's taken the Queen to the afterlife. So what's happened is, I've made this joke, you've not listened to me, it's gone into your subconscious and you've parroted it as if it was your own. Well, that can never be proven. And announced it to everyone as if it was your own thought, and it wasn't, it was mine, your absolute credit stealer. Well, because in my brain, the likelihood of you coming up with a psycho pop joke, joke is minimal. Well, maybe if you listened. Well, you know, you're not that interesting. <laughs> right, well, I guess you won't want to hear Reddit Corner, Yeah, no, I do. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. No, that's why you're here. Please, please. <laughs> um, anyway. I feel really lightheaded, but I think it's because I, I had three spoons of espresso coffee in a normal coffee. Why did you do that? I always do. You don't always do? Well, not always with espresso, but I normally do with instant coffee. Anyway, it's beside the point. Mm. This is your story for Reddit Corner. Thanks. Welcome to Reddit Corner with Becca. Yeah. This story is titled, My Sister Finally Believes in Our Attic Spirit. Finally. Finally. Let's begin. 
Over this summer, my house has recently gained a quite active spirit. We don't know where it came from, but I think it lived in the attic, and since I was cleaning the attic this summer, I must have disturbed it, and now it's become more active. I don't think it's evil, but it has the ability to speak. I, for one, have heard it say, OK, when I was home alone and asked it to stop slamming doors. Very polite of it, yeah. Now on to the case at hand. My sister and stepmom were away this summer, so they didn't experience the attic spirit's arrival. But when I had friends over, they would hear it walking around upstairs, or doors slamming, or have lights turned off on them. Once my sister and stepmom got home, people instantly got to telling them about what was happening, and she laughed in their face, and for the past months, telling me I was making it up, and I was going insane, and was a freak. That, She's a brutal, isn't she? <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> She's just a bit of a bully. Oh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is like a bit tough. Is that a mum or a sister? Sister. Right, sorry. Well, well, I don't know, actually. You know, it could be either. Because it says, got to tell them about what's happening, and she laughed in my face. And this is by who? Cinderella? Yeah. Go on, anyway. Good joke, that. But go on. This continued till Wednesday when it finally decided to show itself to her. It must, it, her must be the sister then, because right, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. of the title. On Wednesday, my sister was cheerleading. She was late to be leaving and was in a rush. And I said, and as I've said on my previous post, my sister is very abusive towards me. Will we pick well, that we up? Picked that up yeah, yeah. Bloody hell. So I'm sitting there in my room as she's screaming at me to get her stuff ready because she didn't want to and blah, blah. We, have we got like a duty of care I, I here to reach might, out yeah. to this person? This... Yeah. Well, what's, what, what, hold on, what's their username? That goth dinosaur. That, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anyone sees a, a, a dinosaur all in black looking, you know, rather depressed, then um, please go over to them and, and tell them it's going to be all right. Um... Yeah, she's getting her stuff ready because she didn't want to and blah, blah. So I told her to fuck off and do it herself. Yay, yeah, yeah, yeah. right off, good. dinosaur. Well, well done. Well done. Um, and she responded by starting to walk towards her bedroom. But before she could get to it, the sound of footsteps running up the stairs and her bedroom door slamming in her face. She was shook and began asking me how I'd done that. And now she finally believes in the attic spirit and doesn't call me a freak for believing in all that. And it says, Attic Spirit and Goth Dino 1, nil little sis. Hooray! <laughs> Hooray. That's a good awesome. story. I like, uh, it's yeah, got a, nice. like a full thread and a bit of recompense at the end. Yeah, I mean, also, so they've, the Goth, that so the Spirit, sorry, the Attic Spirit is clearly on Goth Dinosaur's side a little bit. Because like, she's saying like, oh, did you do us a favour and stop slamming those doors? And the ghost and goes, like, okay. okay. Yeah. And then when the sister's being a dick. It's like on her side, and yeah, like, oh, yeah. right, fine, we'll scare you two, boomf, and slam the door in her face. There's like a Marvel superhero to be made here, a goth dinosaur with a spirit guest friend sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very yeah. Good, very, yeah, very good. Anyone Please. comments on that? Has anyone said, are you really yeah. a dinosaur and, and into goth stuff? Well, I mean, no, it's probably what the, the biggest takeaway that we had here as well. Someone said, interesting story, thanks for telling it. Though primarily, I'm posting to say you should look into some methods of dealing with abusive family members. Um, yeah. Yeah, which... Which is, is fair play, yeah. yeah. Um... Someone says, there were some Apple scholastic books that your story reminds me of where the characters would befriend a ghost and the ghost would protect them. Um, I can't remember the titles anymore, but enjoyed reading your story here. Um, so that's nice. That's it, yeah. So just general, like, well done feedback. Yeah. Someone's commented, anyway, so that's how I befriended a demon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Yeah, good. No, it's just come from the living room then. Mm-hmm. Um, as we're both in the kitchen recording this. Don't want like you don't know what that was. Oh, no, now I know it's the cat eating dry food. Yeah. But prior, I thought it might have been someone snapping the neck of children. So now we've got children in there as well. It's an orphanage, for fuck's sake. Pick up. Get with this programme, will you? Joking. I'm not all right I with know, your attitude today. I know. Today. I'm getting, I mean, maybe I'm, you know what you need to do? Befriend this ghost. <laughs> Get it to slam a door in my face and maybe I'll shut up. <laughs> you imagine after all this time, all the work you've put into paranormal activity, if I befriend a ghost, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be, you would be so upset. And, or if you're a goth dinosaur. She doesn't even deserve a ghost friend. I'm the one who deserves a ghost friend. Yeah, imagine that. Have you ever I've seen I've got anything? two paranormal podcasts. <laughs> How could you not befriend me? Brenda, <laughs> she doesn't even believe. Be like school all over again. Anyway, Beck, thanks for letting us into your corner. You're welcome. Um, and we'll speak to you next week in the hope. Well, not in the hope, but maybe there'll be something more to add to the canon. I... Oh, can I just add though, when we were when we were discussing the five other things that had happened, or four other things that had happened yesterday, we were talking about the knocking on the bedroom window mm. that you rarely freaked you out, and you said, "No, that'll just be the branches from outside of the tree knocking at the door." 
Yeah. And we went outside after recording that. And what did we see? Right, so the branches didn't reach the window, but that tree has been cut since then because the branches were coming right over our path. And the path, so they, not the window, though. No, but if they reach it, what I'm saying is they were reaching the house, they were getting longer, and they have been trimmed, so it could have been. Mm. Um, also, we discovered yesterday that magpies can ta- are known for tapping windows in the dark. Yeah, that's true. That is true, to be fair. Okay, so still much to be addressed, I believe. And also, it's worth mentioning, when you say you were really freaked out at that, I wasn't really freaked out at that because I thought it was paranormal. I was really freaked out at that because I thought someone was trying to get in the house. Yes, but... Which is a reasonable reaction. It was a visceral reaction because something physical happened. Well, yeah, also the neighbour's cat heard it, so... Well, yeah, exactly. You're just backing up my own argument that you're experiencing paranormal activity. Mm -hmm. And on that frustrated noise... So bored talking about this. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, then, well, thank you, Becca, as ever. You're welcome. Thank you for visiting Reddit Corner with Becca. Goodbye. Bye.